Okay, uh, in this tutorial, we're going to demonstrate how buffer overflow vulnerability can be exploited in a Windows operating system. Because traditionally, most tutorials involve Linux uh, examples for uh, buffer overflow exploitation. So for today, we're going to look into uh, stack overflow. So first, we need to set up a virtual machine. Uh, this one is a Windows XP virtual machine. And it has to be a specific version. So you can see here, when I open the command prompt, you get the uh, version. But a more detailed version information can be obtained by typing winver on the prompt. And I hope you can see the information about this uh, a particular VM and notice that service pack 2 is installed. Okay. So once you have satisfied the requirements for the VM, then it's time to do the exploit. So I have here an example uh, vulnerable program that is hosted in github so there will be some messages telling you that to update the OS but for our purposes we don't need to update our OS so let's go to comsci191 and then bof win x86 let us download uh, simple.exe so we download this file uh, this will be placed in the download folder so once it's done Okay, it's done. And then let's look at the source code. So this executable was compiled in a Windows 7 machine, 32 bit, and this is the source code for that particular uh, executable. So you can see here that this might be vulnerable to a, a buffer overflow. So next step is to download this uh, exploit this is a complete exploit already which is written in python which uses the same approach as the one in linux uh, so you can download this i'll check the row and then uh, save this a simple exploit too. and we're done with downloading the required files so let's open uh, notepad plus plus and let us open uh, the downloaded files so let's open the exploit and let's have a short discussion what this does so this is already a complete exploit and uh, almost the same as the one used in linux the main difference is the shell code, the shell code here, pops a calculator instance, Windows calculator instance, and instead of uh, typing the payload uh, from the command line, uh, it is placed in a file here in Drive C. Okay, so next we open uh, Immunity Debugger, and then uh, let's try to open simple.exe. So notice that uh, this program will require a parameter, command line parameter. So let's open uh, command prompt. CD my documents, CD downloads, and you will see here the downloaded files. So if you run simple, it will un uh, create an error, generate an error because we did not specify uh, parameter command line argument. So 
or here simple hello it simply echoes hello so the next step is to put in some payload so when you open the simple in uh, community you need to specify the uh, command line argument here so since we're trying to exploit a buffer overflow vul vulnerability so let's place a lot of A's here and then open so the this is the immunity debugger uh, the main window is divided into four parts you have here the instructions you have here on the right side the uh, registers this is the stack and this is the memory okay so uh, we can begin uh, tracing the execution of this program so uh, first let's uh, use F8 to step into program so when we step into the program you will see here that uh, you'll have uh, a lot of instructions which somehow are not related to the code that we saw earlier so this one here we're right at the point of processing or calling the command line argument and this one here is uh, under the, uh, another uh, part wherein the command line argument is called so we continue executing until this point so actually this location 00401005 is the location of the entry point of our program so if you press instead of pressing f8 when the execution is at this point we press f7 so we will be transferred to this uh, part of the code I already bookmarked this code or what I not necessarily bookmark I put a breakpoint in this code and then so that I can proceed uh, so you press F2 to set a breakpoint just like you did in Linux so F2 will set a breakpoint here so that when we run the program again we can press play and the execution will stop at this point and we can actually trace the execution of our program so we press uh, F8 this is a job instruction and it will go to this point and this is actually the main program so the instruction would push the register e the value of uh, the register EBP on the stack so Notice the value of EBP here is 0013FF0. This is the top of the stack. So when you press F7 or F8, so that value of EBP 3FFC0 is pushed to the stack 3FFC0 here. And then we place, uh, we continue the execution by stepping through the code and we stop at this point okay so we stop at this point okay because this is the part we're in this a uh, function call so what happens is when this function is called which actually this one here for zero one zero to zero or is it oh i think this is one this one here so there is an indirect jump not directly here so 40100a 40100a it will jump to this point but actually it will jump back here so before this instruction gets executed the address of the next instruction will be pushed to the stack so currently the stack value is this one and this is the location of the stack so at this point when I press F7 you will let's observe that this value will be pushed to the stack why is that pushed to the stack 
so that when the function call returns, it knows where to continue the execution. So when I press F7, I want you to observe the value here on the stack. I want you to observe that to verify that this value will be pushed to the stack. So when I press F7, and indeed, you see that 40105F, 40105F is pushed to the stack. And when we continue the execution of the program, so this one here is actually another function that is being executed. So this is actually uh, the call to this one. So it jumped to this. So if we uh, continue executing this, so it basically performs this one, this line here is the one that performs the string copy operation. So let us observe the values in the stack. So uh, of course the values that we pushed earlier was already overwritten because we, all, we have a different uh, stack frame now. Okay. So this is the current content of the stack. Okay. So when I execute, so I press F8 at this point, let us observe what happened to the stack. And there, you see a lot of A's got pushed to the stack. Okay. And at that point, or at this point, if we continue stepping through the program, and then we finish the execution so at this point uh, this is the part where in we return to the function that called this function and what will happen is when the function returns it has to go back to the address to the next instruction on the main on the function that called it so if i press f8 you will notice that the instruction pointer did not go back to the intended location. Okay? So, the debugger will tell you that it doesn't know how to proceed to this address because this address is not readable. And this is actually the ASCII or the hex code for the character A, which is what we uh, inputted to the program. So we can therefore say that it is possible to exploit this program because we were able to overwrite the EIP here with our input. Okay? So we'll stop here for now and the next video will tell us or will tell you how to exploit this vulnerability.